everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today, I'm going to show you how I did the chicken that I showed in the picture yesterday. And I'm going to put that little video in right here. This is the chicken that I'm going to be taking out of this, because I'm going to make myself a little snack. So, this is what I start with, and it's frozen. As you can see, it is frozen, and I only cut part of the bag. I don't cut the whole thing. And my hands are clean. I put it in the. I just put it directly. Take them out of here. Put them directly into the frying pan. I'm probably moving too fast. Okay, I'll slow down. Okay, then after I put them in the frying pan, then I pour some water on them because I need these to thaw out enough so that I can so that I can um, cut them into cubes. Then I take this cover that I keep here. It's a, it's a pan that we it used to have, um, it was a square pan, sort of, yeah, it was a square pan, or, a, yeah, it was square. And I had Jim pound out the sides because I wanted to make it a flat pan. So it's a flat pan now, or flat cover. And I keep this on it because it's got, um, this ball is made out of metal, and it would get very hot. Now to light my stove. Okay, it's probably cooked about, I don't know, maybe seven minutes. I didn't time it, and it's ready to cut. It's probably soft enough for me to cut. So I'm going to take it out of this pan, and I'm going to put it on the cutting board and cut it. As you can see, it's still raw, but it's soft enough for me to cut. Now you could save this juice if you want to. Or you can give it to your pets if you want to. Or you can throw it down the drain. Do whatever you want. Okay, after I've cut it in little strips, you see I took off the little bit of scum. I'm going to give this to the dog. He will love it. But that's what you get when you, sometimes when you boil chicken, you get a little bit of scum. And I don't like it, so I just take it off. But anyways, these are in strips. And now I'm going to cut them in um, little cubes and because I'm holding the camera and doing the work I turn the board so I can do it and then I just cut it in little cubes little bite-sized pieces now I'm going to add eggs to the mixture to the bowl I've got a big bowl here I just put one egg and I forgot I was supposed to film this and because I don't wash my eggs before um, I put them in the fridge because I want them to have their natural bloom on them. Remember, the store-bought eggs are washed, and it's because governments think you should wash them. But in Europe, they're not washed, and they last longer. They don't even refrigerate them in Europe. But I I leave these with the bloom, so that means I'm going to have to wash it off before I crack it. So that's what I'm going to do now. I just wash. I just run a little water on it, wash it off. And when you crack an egg, a lot of people will go like this on the edge of the bar or jar or dish or whatever. You don't want to do that. You can get crumbs in the in the eggshell. So what I do is I just give it a crack. And I'm going to do this with one hand. And you open it. And you don't get um, shell in there. That was a magic. I can never do that again. I'm going to try it, though. Let's see. Number... 13, we'll try this egg. Got to wash it off a little bit. I forget the camera's not always where it should be. Then you give it a crack, and you, well, this one's not going to, oh, yeah, well, there we go. Oops, I missed it. Ah, I did it, though, with one hand. I missed the showing you. Darn it. And then I rinse my shells out because I keep the shells for the chicken. I rinse them out. Oh, I'm so bad at this camera deal by myself. What it is is I'm looking at what I'm doing, not looking at what you're seeing. And then I take these and I put them and I I, I put them upside down on my coffee filters. And let them dry and then when they're dry I throw them in here 
and then I grind them up and give them to the chickens and then they look like then they look like this like a powder and then I sprinkle that on their food okay I've got three eggs in there now we're gonna scramble these eggs up I'm sure you all know how to scramble an egg but I'll show you my scrambling of eggs and what I like to do is I like to do this and make sure that it's all because the um, in the it's all mixed because in the fresh eggs the whites are actually more stiff than with um, the store-bought eggs okay after that is done sink. and then I pick up the chicken with my clean hand and I dump it in there okay then I wash my hand again I gotta keep washing my hand off now yesterday's I added this um, Romano Parmesan cheese on it and it tasted really good so I'm going to do that again and I don't measure I just I just dump you like the looks of it then you're you got enough if you don't like the looks of it then you add a little more okay it's added Voon had talked about this Montreal steak seasoning this is what it looks like I had this in my cupboard and as you can see I'm just now starting to use it but I did have also this Canadian steak seasoning that I apparently was using and I think they're pretty much the same ingredients and there's no MSG in it and I don't think there's there's none in this one either this one's a McCormick brand and this one is a Tones brand so I don't know but there this this stuff is really good it's got um it's got salt black pepper red pepper garlic in it and it's got some sunflower oil but I don't think there's a lot I don't know but and then I just I just shake can you shake as much as you want and I like things to look like they have something in it so I put probably way more than you would okay that's good and then I use my spatula and stir it all together which I will show you at the end okay after it's all stirred together which it's mixed pretty well now now I will get my bacon grease I'm almost out of bacon grease I keep it on the cupboard and as you can see my bacon grease has something black in there you know what that is that's black pepper because we buy the bacon that's already um, black peppered it's really good we get it from all these then I put a huge spoon this is a tablespoon it's a uh, it's what they call a tablespoon that you would eat with for um, I don't know soup we used to use it for soup but I use a good tablespoon of this and I put it in the frying pan okay see it's in the frying pan but I also I also add a good well this is getting pretty low so I'm going to add some to this too. I like to add it to the mixture that I'm making also. So that's going to have extra black pepper in it. Oh, I told Jim we have to make some more bacon because I'm running out of bacon grease. Then if, if I ran out of bacon grease, you could I you would use um, coconut oil, but you don't want to use olive oil when you're cooking. The reason you don't want to use olive oil when you're cooking, if olive oil is a good oil but olive oil does not like heat and it changes its goodness to bad by heating it so when you use olive oil that's supposed to be added after you've removed your thing from the heat so those of you that are, are using olive oil because it's a good oil should not be using it when it's on the heat okay now i'm going to pour the mixture into the frying pan but I'm going to make the frying pan hot first I want the frying pan real hot so that this is covering because my my pans are old and they they don't stick all the time but they do can stick so we want to make sure they're hot with this um, baking grease and cover every spot this is hard doing it in the camera holding the camera and doing the work 
If Jim was home, I'd have him hold the camera. But he's at work. He'll just enjoy the goodness when he comes home. Okay, I'm going to pour it in, and I'll show you after I've poured it in because I need two hands again. Okay, I poured it in. Now I spread it around so that it can be all over in the frying pan. I'm going to have to turn the fan on because otherwise the smoke detector is going to go off. It may go off anyways, but at least I'm trying to prevent it. And this is what I do. And then I let this fry, and after it's frying a while, I will show you what I do again. Okay, after it's been frying just long enough to rinse out your dishes, I come back and I will stir it up because I don't want it to be solid. The egg will make it solid. So I want to break it up. And I'll do this part, and this is what I, what I do, and then I will show you again. i got to turn the fan back on, otherwise Mr. Snoke Detector will say, Hey! Okay, and you know what? Just after I turned the fan on, the smoke detector said, Hey, hey! And it did its thing. Well, this is what it looks like after you've stirred it a little bit, and then you let it cook a little more, so you can get the brownness that you like and it's covered with egg and cheese and there's some that had, don't have as much on it but it's the cheese and the egg part is so good it's like a, a nice little treat so I hope you enjoyed this little cooking episode and I will talk to you in just a minute so stay don't go away I'm coming back I'm going to come back this quick, but I'm going to show you this is what it looks like, and it's ready to be turned off. It looks absolutely delicious. Well, now you all can make the chicken, and it's a way of me to use up some of my eggs, and it's really very tasty and very easy to do, and you don't have to worry whether you forgot to take the chicken out or not, because as you saw, I did it from frozen. It works great, and my dog always looks forward to the juice that is in the pan. I could save it for me, but I usually give it to Jake. He, he likes to have it mixed with his dog food. Well, I was watching Pamela's Adorable Creations, I think is what it's <laughs> called. I should have looked it up again, Pamela. I keep forgetting to look up your channel. I look for your face when I'm looking for your your videos. I just have the little circles on the side of my iPod, iPad, I mean, and I just, I scroll and I look for the face and when I find the face then I click on it and there we are. I never really pay attention to the channel names. It is a, a, a downside of my, it's a fault of mine, I guess. Well, anyways, I was watching Pamela and she was doing this little basket that you crochet to put her little washcloths in. And I thought, that is the nicest little basket. So I was crocheting along, and I would, because I'm on the iPad, it takes me a minute to stop the darn video because I Chromecast you to the TV. And so I have to, uh, it's, it's a chore. I should just watch you on the computer and it's easier to stop and start you, but I don't. I Chromecast you on the television because I like to see you big and like live. <laughs> as big as I can get you. But anyways, I wanted to sh share with you those people that like to crochet and they aren't happy with their projects and they think they can't do it. Well, I do the same thing. Now, this is the, the little basket, and I'm not happy with it. So guess what I'm going to do with this? I've already started to do it. I've started to unravel. I'm going to take this out because, see, this is all you do with crochet. It's so easy to undo. You just take it out, and when you are when you got it out, you can. I'll show you how to roll the yarn so that... that um, because you'll think, oh no, now I'm going to get all tangled with that yarn. But you won't get all tangled. Because I show you how to make a pull skein again with this yarn that you just pulled off. Because it dis it came off of a pull skein. Now I'm using, she I think she used a cotton, she used actually two skeins of two different um, yarns. And I think that one of them was a cotton. I decided I was just going to make it out of this um 
yarn that I had upstairs. I went upstairs and I was looking for, I was actually looking for that crochet hook that I couldn't find before. Well, I found it, but it wasn't upstairs, it was downstairs. And when I was up there, I found this yarn and I thought, oh, I didn't even know I had that color. So I thought, and I only have one skein of it, so I thought, well, I will just make that basket with this. And what, at first when I was making it, I was thinking, gosh, my bottom's not as flat as I like it. So I think I should rip it out. And then when I thought about it a little more, I thought, nah, I'll just keep it. And then the more I thought about it, the more I didn't like it. And so what you do is you just rip out. As you can see, it's getting smaller. It's so cute. And she does this and I do this all the that. time. And I used to tell the kids, don't tell Daddy that I ripped it out. Because what I would do is I would crochet up to the point where I... um had it before so he would never see the ripped out yarn but the kids always told on me they'd say guess what mommy did and he'd go I know she probably ripped it out and they go yep she ripped it out but I says I did and he go it's right back where it was well I had I should have had been further because I should was working on it all day but anyways you get it all the way ripped out there we are we're done so then you take it, I think I showed this one other time too, you just take it and put a little piece over your hand and then spread your fingers so that you're making it loose. And you go around and around and around and then you turn you turn it. Make sure you don't wind this little piece that we're keeping out because that's going to be your pull skein. And go around again. And keep doing this. And keep it light because you want that pulse gain to work nicely and turn it again and wind some more remember you got to keep that little pull string here it is got to keep him free and make it a little another wound and when you think you've got the middle of your ball is going to be loose enough because once the yarn starts coming out everything gets looser it's looser anyway so then you kind of tuck it together and then you roll and make a real ball. And you go round and round and round. And then turn it, but keep that little piece free. And roll. And see it's still free. And you roll. And you keep doing this till you run out of yarn. I'm going as fast as I can. And when you buy those skeins that you have to have somebody holding them, this is what you do with them. So that, because otherwise you'll have it tangled. So you have your children or a child or your husband can hold his hands out like this and then you wind and make your balls, your pull skeins because sometimes you can buy that yarn cheaper than you can a pull skein yarn. It depends. And it's all because they think that, you know, it's, I don't know, they don't think anything, but I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, this is what you keep doing, and you keep going. I'm almost done. I gotta keep that tail out. And when you're all done pulling, doing this, what I do with the ball then, because see, I still have the skein. What I do is I just take my my ball. Here, can you hold this a little bit so I can, because I have it laying on my lap. I take the ball and I just go like this. I just tuck it in my spot that it was that it was supposed to be in. And then my pull skein would pull. And that's how, what I would do. I'm not going to pull it because I don't want it too big right now. That's what you do with this yarn. And then if the skein gets too, too um, skinny again, I make a ball with that too so that it's easier. Otherwise, it will tangle on you. So that's it for today you'll get the chicken and you get the ripping out of my my crocheting and how to make a ball so I hope you all had a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow bye bye